Long-running work should not block the UI. And that's why Work Manager is built with multi-threading in mind from the ground up. In this episode of Mad Skills, I'll introduce you to APIs Work Manager provides to stay off the main thread. And then we'll show you a way to update the UI once your work is done. So without further delay, let's go. I'll use the official Work Manager sample app to guide you through the content at hand. The app allows you to select a picture and apply image filters to it. It contains a library module which holds the workers used throughout the sample. As Karen mentioned in the video on Work Manager basics, workers are where you get to define what sort of tasks you want Work Manager to perform. We recommend creating a separate worker for each distinct task. This way, it's easier to run work in parallel or sequential. The most basic worker in the sample is the cleanup worker. So that's where we start. The cleanup worker takes care of removing temporary files that get created during the filtering process. It takes no input and produces no output. It inherits from worker and overrides the do work function. In do work, it calls cleanup directory and then returns a result. A thrown exception results in a failure, otherwise the result success is returned. Cleanup directory performs a blocking file operation. Work manager promises that this is executed on a background thread. But there is no threading code in Cleanup Worker, so I'll follow the hierarchy to find more info about how this works. Worker also contains start work. It is provided by the worker's base class, Listenable Worker, and will eventually be called by Work Manager to run the declared task. And in start work is where the threading magic happens. For a worker, start work requests the background executor and executes a runnable where do work is executed. And just like that, the synchronously written code in do work becomes asynchronous. You can even configure which executor to use. In the application class, I already have a configuration set up. And by calling set executor and passing in an executor of my choice, I can change the threading configuration of my work manager instance. The executors class provides a selection of available executors to pick from. And by using a single thread executor, all background calls will be run sequentially. A fixed thread pool executor instead will spin up a specific number of threads, which then can be used in parallel. Without making any configuration myself, Work Manager will take care of this. Taking available processes on device into account and creating between two and four worker threads. And that looks good to me, so I don't need to set my own executor. When writing Android apps in Kotlin, we can rely on coroutines for lightweight and effective asynchronous operations. Work Manager, like many other Jetpack libraries, comes with an accompanying KTX library. To use it, we add the KTX suffix to the Work Manager's dependency and then sync the project. Now, instead of worker, you can extend from coroutine worker. And by doing this, do work becomes a suspend function. This means instead of depending on the default executor declared in the configuration, the task now gets managed by a coroutine dispatcher. Without any configuration, that is the default dispatcher. In Cleanup Worker, we want to delete some files. This counts as an I.O. operation. And Coroutines also has a built-in dispatcher for that. To move it from the default dispatcher to the I.O. dispatcher, all that's necessary is declaring in which context this should run, and then supply the I.O. dispatcher. Now the Cleanup code runs on the correct dispatcher managed by Coroutines. And we recommend using Kotlin in combination with coroutines for asynchronous operations. If you're not using coroutines but RxJava, we've got you covered. Work Manager offers support for RxJava 2 and 3. To use it, add the RxJava suffix to the build Gradle files Work Manager dependency and sync. And now I can create an Rx version of the cleanup worker. The RxJava artifact provides Rx worker, which is extended from for the Rx cleanup worker. Here we override the create work function and return a result wrapped in one of RxJava's sequence types, single. This now slots perfectly in a given RxJava sequence. By default, Rx workers use the thread executor that was declared in the work manager configuration, like I showed for worker. To change the subscribing thread, you can override get background executor and return a custom executor for each worker. The sample app is 100% Kotlin code and uses coroutines. This means the Rx worker has now served its demonstration purpose and I'm deleting it. Work Manager is designed for long running operations, whether deferred or immediate. Some jobs like in this sample are triggered by the user and can be executed immediately. So it's good practice to let the user know when their job has completed by updating the UI. The Work Manager sample applies filters to images 
then saves these images to the file system. At this point, it would be nice for the user to have a chance to review that saved image. And the work manager sample also does just that. Once the continuation is finished, I can click on output and will be presented with the image that was just filtered. When the work request to save that image was created, the save image worker got tagged with the output tag. Using this tag, we can find and query state for that worker later on. But polling state and checking for completion is, well, not a very reactive approach. Luckily, Jetpack libraries are designed to work together nicely. In this case, we're using a view model in combination with the live data. Work Manager provides several functions to wrap work infos in a live data. And we're using get work infos by tag live data. And since we only care for a single work info, we can use the live data KTX artifact, which enables quick transformation of multiple work infos to the single work info we care for. In the filter activity, we can then observe that and react to state changes. Here, we can check whether the work is finished and then update the UI accordingly. And with that last tip, back to the camera. In this video, you've seen multiple ways how Work Manager helps you to keep your long running jobs away from the UI thread. I've also shown you how to communicate results back to the user. If you want to learn more about this, check out the links below for related guides, code labs, and samples. And come back for the next episode when we'll dive into configuration options, debugging, and testing. If you like this video, click the thumbs up. And for more videos like this one, check out the Android Developers channel on YouTube. Thanks for watching.